start uh, with our opening presenter and our opening presenter for today's master class is mark wendelboy atofte and uh, who is a product manager sales finance and durables from santander consumer bank so mark has uh, has been working in santander consumer bank uh, from last 7 years and he has experience in customer experience management business process improvement and strategic planning and uh, public speaking by analyzing customer insights customer journey analysis enhancing the customer experience and driving customer panel so he's going to share his expertise on why customer should be central to your digital innovation strategy so uh, he's already here with us so hi mark how are you hello hello and i'm good i'm good thank you That's uh, thank good. you for having me Thank you so much for being here and we are really honored to have you as a keynote speaker and uh, Mark you can start your presentation after sharing your screen. Yeah, I will start sharing my screen here and hopefully you will let me know if anything looks weird or are not uh, working. Right? I can I can perfectly see your slides. Okay so good luck stage is all yours now mike okay. I have trouble using Fiona but but I will leave it in the presentation yeah okay you can hear me still um but as a uh, As Anna mentioned, I am the Nordic product manager for what we now call checkout lending in Santander Consumer Bank Nordics. Um, this was previously known as sales finance, but basically everything you can finance through a checkout experience as a customer. Um, those products from Santander sites is is under my realm of uh, responsibility. I've put in here that I am um, currently in Santander Consumer Bank Nordics, and I will come a bit back to that on why that. this distinction is um, key to what I'll present um, later on in the presentation. But to give a bit more background of where I came from, um, <clears throat> seven years ago, actually to this date, uh, this is uh, my seven year anniversary date, I started as an FLA in customer service and from there worked my way through um, a, a high motivation to create excellent customer experience in Santander uh, and really seeing and, and driving the value of that. uh was kind of my uh, my token in Santander so from there i built myself up in the company and have been working with process improvements with the customer experience at the core uh, customer experience um uh, as a customer experience manager and now shifted to the position of having this uh, nordic product role um so that's uh, a bit about me a bit more into this distinct distinction on um on Santander and why Santander Nordics is is important to to know about um in, in the big uh, scheme of things um Santander is a very big player in the market i'm sure that uh all the participants here has has heard uh, and even encountered Santander in, in their daily lives um and Santander is is a different entity depending on what region of the world you um, you live in or or visit So we are of course on on the very high level owned by Banco Santander and and from there we have a Spanish uh, subset a uh, headquarter um called Santander Consumer Finance and this is due to the fact that Santander is in in a lot of part of the world also a retail bank so you can have your current account and and everything go down to, and talk to your advisor and, and get your daily economy sorted but in terms of the nordics um and and in terms of santander consumer finance this is the part of santander taking care of the more lending focused uh, products um so financing your your uh, your dreams and and items that you buy in in your daily life and in terms of uh, santander nordics and getting to the point now of why I wanted to to take you through this is that santander nordics was uh, born digital um so when Santander uh, approached the nordic market it was as a digital bank from from the word go and in terms of digital uh, innovation strategy and digital um, strategy in, in general being born 
digital um, is, is a different outset um, in my point of view than, than if you were born as a physical bank moving into a digital world especially in, in terms of the Nordics, which is a thriving environment for, for fintech companies and for technical uh, technological infrastructure in general. We have very high capabilities in the market, very high competition in the digital space in the Nordic market, um, compared to especially the Southern Europe parts of, um, of our markets. Um, so this is a, a very important um, note to take into account when, when I talk uh, or, or keep in mind when I talk about our digital strategy and how we have been working with that. Um, since we are not only trying to defend our position in, in a highly competitive digital market, but we're also trying to utilize and capitalize on this thriving uh, technological environment that we live in with, with a lot of fintechs being based in the Nordics and have very high capabilities in the Nordics. We see that as an attribution to, to the market rather than just a threat, where, which could also be, be your outset on, on something like that. Um, but that brings me into the, the core of my presentation here and what I really want to talk about because I want to tell you a bit more about the, the digital innovation journey that uh, Santander, especially during the last couple of years, has gone through um, because we have uh, experienced a high need to, to have a, a lot more focus on this, which is driven um, uh, to the point of this conference, highly by, by customer demands and customer expectations uh, in a competitive market. So starting out the digital innovation journey and, and where I think it's, it's crucial to, to really break down that work um, and, and to know where you're starting and where you're heading, it's kind of like three components to, to working with this digital journey. There is of course the why, why do we have this digital journey? What is the purpose? And, and that can come in very many shapes and forms, um, but it's very important to be clear uh, and, and to be well considered on, on that area to, in, in my point of view. There's of course the what, and I will come a bit more into what I, what I mean about the what, but, but basically what is it that we are then doing with that purpose? And um, a very crucial part, which I have seen personally um, being neglected, uh, with great consequences is the who. Who is really responsible for working this? Um, is it the right people? Um, and is it, is, is it the right constellations of people working on this? Um, because in this classical Venn um setup, if you have the why and the what, well, you will have a, have a lot of uh, direction with, with no real actions because nobody has the responsibility or owns up to the responsibility of actually driving what, what you're seeking for. If you, on the other hand, have the what you're going for but and have the people who are supposed to work towards that what, you will, in at least in my experience, um, often encounter uh, actions with no motivation because we, of course, every company have people who can drive initiatives forward, but if they don't know why, the motivation to, to drive forward fast will, will disappear. Uh, on the other side of, the, of this diagram, if you have the purpose and the why, and you have the people to do it, you will uh, experience stagnation on the area and you will, won't get ahead. Um, an experience from from my own um, work life experience was a, um, a a good position as innovation manager being implemented into the company and and the completely right person to do that um, was also put into that position um, but he didn't have any other direction that his title was innovation manager innovation wasn't defined, uh, the direction wasn't defined. It probably was um, beyond my understanding of the company at the time. But but what I know from speaking to him, he uh, experienced was that he was a one man army getting nowhere with this, um, both because it wasn't the right amount of who's in, in that. Um, and, and of course there was a purpose of it, but, but he didn't have the what he didn't have the, the bullseye to go for what was the success of this. So in my opinion, if you can bring all of these three things together, 
you get motivated purposeful actions towards your digital strategy and that's of course what's what we all are aiming for right so i want to to take this as a basis of uh, of what i will be presenting in the next 20 minutes uh, and starting out with the why uh, basically the the purpose uh, illustrated with this um uh, animation of a lady running towards this bullseye which we will come into in in a little bit the the what but the purpose is what makes this person in the picture actually running that long road to the bullseye it's what makes it purposeful for her to put the one foot in front of the other and i think that a um a large pitfall in this area is that you as a as a, as a high level manager can fall into the pitfall of um, spewing corporate bs sorry for for the very frank expression but i've seen multiple times um strategies basing off of we need to have the customer at the core we are customer centric and that is perfectly fine that makes a lot of sense but what does it actually mean to anybody we are we have the customer at the core great in a position to what? Do, not caring about our customers, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's kind of stating the obvious, obvious in, in a nice way, but it doesn't, doesn't give anybody any real purpose of what, is, what are we doing and why. Um, so, so to that point, I think the most crucial parts of on the per, uh, purpose part of uh, conducting a digital strategy is to have it operationally anchored, meaning that you need to go to tell the strategy or convey your strategy to, to your employees and they need to go back to their desk, sit down and do their daily task and find meaning towards your strategy. They know exactly why they're doing what they're doing every minute of the day because it is fulfilling this strategy and having vague strategy statements or great tag, marketing taglines on this strategy doesn't give them that purpose it, it's not tangible and that's the next point here because when you have the strategy and you are asking uh, the company to to move for the strategy and going in this direction with this purpose um, you're subsequently also telling them that i'm going to measure you on your fulfillment or help in fulfillment of this strategy. And if it's, if it's not something that you can take away and measure, um, and that's not tangible to the work they're doing in their everyday life, um, you will uh, then again lose the focus, lose the motivation of, of your employees. And of course, as always, a purpose uh, for a company um, to a last extent needs to be visionary. And that can come in various shapes and forms but we we want as people to drive forward and to drive towards a meaningful purpose that that elevates what we're doing and the company we're working in so if it's unambitious or not visionary um it, it's again moving away motivation and i think a lot of this purpose is creating motivation to uh, to underlie your strategy work uh, or how the strategy comes into play in your um, in your in your company um, and the last part here about being understandable is that again back to the point of having great taglines that easy to market that sounds good but it if it doesn't really give any meaning or, ha or is understandable standable to how it reflects to the daily work of your employees they, they have no chance of conveying this into actual work uh, or into their everyday reality so I think for, for um, sorry, I lost the thread here. I think for the motivation of people working towards the strategic goals that you set out in a, in a, in a strategy, um, it's very impo important to, to fill out a, a very good purpose for them as the base layer of everything you do from there. And then they can take that into what do we then need to do? And that is the next point that I want to go into. Here is a little bit of a flavor of, of what we have been doing in, in Santander. But basically, you need to tell, uh, you need to translate your purpose into what is actionable, tangible for your employees. Uh, what is it that we are trying to achieve with this purpose? 
we know why we're doing it, but what are we actually doing? And this comes down to what are the key capabilities that you are trying to achieve with your digital uh, strategy in, in this area. Um, so basing off of this slide, you can see customer centricity. Of course, it's, it's very important, but what does it actually mean? It means greater interactions, frictionless processes, and transparent approach. Now that's also very high level of greater interactions. What is a great interaction? And, and you still need to define that in, in the work you have with the strategy when it comes down to, to actually uh, fulfilling your strategy. But you need to take the high level purpose and, and bring it into increments or capabilities that you're achieving or trying to achieve as a company to be at the position that, that, that you want to be in. So looking further here, um, we in Sanzadeo want to be customer centric. We want to be platform based and we want, and on the other part, we have partners who is um, equal instrumental to our success in the Nordics uh, as customers are. And they are a, an extension of us towards the end customers. So in those three areas, what is it really that it boils down to in terms of what capabilities do we see that Sanzadeo needs to bring to the market to fulfill this overlaying strategy, which is we want to be the leading financial platform uh, for partners and customers in the Nordics. So bringing this down to a capability level um, that, that is tangible and measurable and that we can sit down and work on in our everyday life uh, to achieve is what brings your purpose or motivation for doing it in the first place into life. Uh, and then the last part of, of that, um, that Venn diagram that I have is that then who needs to do this? And, and this is, um, this is sounds easy, maybe on the surface, like who needs to do this? Well, it's this, this, and this department, but, but in reality is also how do we make sure that these people work on this in the best way? And I think a lot of uh, success lies in having a common language about this because this becomes very high level very quickly because it's strategical work and you need it to move it into a tactical uh, action plan. So what we've done in Santander in terms of digital uh, strategy is that we have kind of reframed the, um, the, the thinking about the digital strategy and saying that we have stores. So every interaction we have the, with the customer, we can treat as a store. Um, like a physical store, but this gives us a common language and this gives us some parallels into everyday society and everyday very tangible actions that we can use um, to kind of put these right people in and what kind of actions they need to do in, in order to fulfill the full picture. So if we had a store um, down on the street, uh, what are we selling? What are we offering and who are we offering it to? Who are decorating the store? Uh, who is giving the customer service, who is building inside of the store, all of the decorations um, and, and having, um, having a parallel like that or having something tangible or like a common language about the different tasks that is, um, I'm missing the English word, which is comparable to, to a very concrete example that you can, can take and feel on makes it easier for, for people to understand what is the actual task here, what is their contribution to the whole of the digital strategy, and how do they interlink with each other? Because of course you cannot uh, build the decorations if you haven't been told how they're supposed to look like yet. And you cannot tell how the decorations look like if you don't know who you're selling the products to. So in that way, it, it comes full circle within the company and it's get, get easier to identify your stakeholders and who you need to collaborate with in terms of creating a digital success in, in the key market with the purpose and, and the capabilities that you're trying to achieve with your quote unquote store in the market. 
So I think for for a very key key point here is to to get people to collaborate. They need to understand what are we doing, what are we driving towards, and why. Back to the first slide again. We need the motivation and we need the direction to be effective and invested in creating a digital strategy. And to a large extent, a lot of this is, of course, based on the first part I told about what should we offer and to whom, because that's the key uh, point of, of doing this in, in a customer centric world. We need to have the customer in, in focus. And, and, and to that point, um, we could easily go in and say, all right, we are building a store. We are gathering all the right people with a lot of good experience and we know how to create this. We put up an under construction sign on the forefront of the store and then we build for six months and then we open. And you might as well stand there and then nobody comes and visits your store because you forgot to ask what the customers was actually looking for, which kind of colors would they like, what kind of products are they looking for or what kind of um, variation of products are they looking for. Um, so in, in relation to this, who is going to work on this, you need somebody to make sure that the store is anchored in the customer needs that is out there. Especially on digital distribution, we have a tendency as a digital bank in a fintech environment to, to be way more advanced in, in our technical understanding than our, than our customers actually are. So if we build from, from the inside out uh, and give great technical, uh, digital, uh, innovative uh, solutions to the market that they are not ready to consume or they are not um, technically advanced enough to, to understand and easily use, you will lose with the best solution in the world from a technical and digital standpoint. Um, which is a, a very big pitfall to fall in the, again. So I'm a bit, very big advocate on, on A-B testing, everything that you do. Make sure you have the customer insights before you start designing anything. And, and do this on a continuous basis. This is not a one-off task to ask the customers, what do you, do you want? And then go into your construction for six months. You need to touch base with your customer base and your partner base every single step of the way when you make these decisions. And this is where the customers come in and how they are driving the digital innovation that we are building um, in our own worlds. Um, because if you, you might sell your product, but you could sell even more if you have them on board and you get a inherent investment from your customers in, in what you're actually building and how you're setting up your digital store. Um, so, so that's, in essence, the, the, the journey I truly believe is important for companies to, to take very seriously and, and work throughout the, these three areas. Um, but uh, of course, on the backside of that, there is still a, a very big open question. And that, that is, how do you manage this in a company? Because this is a very high commitment. This is a lot of different people uh, resources, working very closely together and collaboratively together. And all of this takes time and it takes resource and it seems, takes a big effort for, for your company to achieve. So it's important to, to have a framework for, for this group or this company to actually work within, again, to create common language, to create common processes and to create a road for them to drive on. Because if they have to kind of find or invent the road before they can even move ahead, um, you will again get stagnation and, and there's other commitments that they can, uh, other roads that are already built that they can drive on, then, they, then that's the humanly natural uh, path to go um, for, for in, any employee, any, any, people, any human in, in the world. Um, so it's a very important to, um, to create this road for them to, to drive on. Um, to, to set them up to, to succeed on your strategy in the best possible way. And, and I would like to use the last couple of minutes here to, to kind of talk on how 
have we um, managed this or trying to manage this in something that this is very new um, but it is uh, seeming to be very successful and, and a very good approach for us the next slide fair warning it's very busy uh, please don't spend too much time to try to read everything through here but but it's just to show kind of the setup that that we uh, believe needs to be in place to actually manage to to drive big initiatives like this forward because digital innovation especially in, in the financial space and especially in the nordics it is the core of, of what we're doing we cannot avoid digital innovation being the outset of success uh, both now and in the future um, innovating on on what we do in the digital space is so crucial um, for sense and uh, even being born digital it, it is on the constant challenge so this is a very big busy slide uh, showing the the full process from kind of a, a birth of idea uh, and all the way to uh, implementing it development and everything like that so it's just to show that this is a very complex and big process I want to focus in on the top left corner here on the strategy and portfolio, also with the theme of, of, uh, of this conference. What we have done in this space um, is that, first of all, we have started to adopt the scaled agile framework uh, with agile release trains in IT. That maybe doesn't mean that much to you, but basically what it is that we try to work in an agile fashion to, to have speed and to have the right competence and scoring into the right projects at the right time um, in, in contradiction to the classical waterfall approach of having one project uh, followed by another project followed by another project. These projects are, are working in parallel, they're working beside each other and it's often the same resources that needs to be involved in, in different projects. And this is a, an attempt um, at least and it's working pretty good to, to actually try to achieve all of those parallel projects with, with the same resources going in an effective way. So what we have created in Santander is what we call value teams. I am leading the checkout, led, uh, checkout lending value team and we are bringing in all the needed resources into a core working group. They are in other core working groups as well, but taking the product strategy of checkout lending and the digital strategy of what we're doing and, and getting all the right people on the same table and working from that strategy on what is it then that we need to do in order to achieve the capabilities that are in our digital strategy. Then that is taken, uh, prioritized in that group, um, collaborating with other value teams on other product streams, coming up with a common prioritization of what is the key initiatives to do to achieve our digital strategy, and then funneling that all the way down to the development of the actual features that we are putting in the market. In this way, we're making sure that the holistic view of the bank is always putting the most valuable items on top um, and, and, and it's changeable, it's interchangeable. It's not a set product plan that we need to follow in a waterfall model. It can change from week to week. Uh, depending on what we see in the market, what we experience from partners and, and the customer demands coming in um, to us in the other end. So it's a very comprehensive work and a very big company adjustment, but we are starting to see the benefits of working like this. And it is very uh, beneficial for, for us in, in working with strategy work and actually doing to get the strategy to be more tangible for the actual people in their everyday life in Sansandam. So on that note, I have used my time. Uh, I want to thank you again for, for listening in and I hope this was, uh, was beneficial for you to listen into. Uh, and and uh, if I remember correct, there was supposed to also be a possibility for some Q&A. Maybe not. Uh, hi, Mark. Hello. 
uh thank you so much uh i'll ask the audience that if they're having any question they can ask you in the chat or in the qa session right okay so thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here and adding value and uh, taking out time from your busy schedule to uh for this session so uh ladies and gentlemen if you will be having any question you can drop in the chat or in the q session and mark is here to answer all of our queries okay definitely thank you have a great day thank you you too bye